Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel for today's lesson. This is where I can help you become a better artist. We are going to talk about drawing hair. I know this is a huge topic. A lot of people want to know how to draw hair, how to layer it, different styles, all of that. So I'm going to give you the <clears throat> backbone of how I develop hair whenever I sketch it. A lot of these techniques that I'm going to be talking about today can also be applied to fur. So it's because of the mechanical movements that you're going to be using with your pencil. You can achieve the same strokes. Now, I'm going to give a little bit of a disclaimer here, and that is the hair that I'm going to be drawing today is more straight hair than anything. I'll give some pointers on how to do curly hair, on how to do maybe even frizzy hair, but we're just going to use what I drew on this female for now. It's a cyberpunk character. Uh, I specifically left the hair blank because I know that I was going to come back and teach how to draw the hair and layer it and everything. So first things first, how do you actually start drawing hair? One of the ways that I used to do it was probably the worst way to do it, and that is drawing every single little strand and hoping that together it would build up something believable. Now, when you notice men and women with straight hair, long straight hair, even when you come through it, even when you do whatever you want to it, the individual strands are not distinguishable when certain light sources hit it. Instead, you want to approach drawing hair in clumps. Okay, so let me explain. I've started it up here where you can see these come to a point. Now, these are very crudely drawn. There's a lot of open space here and whatnot. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to move down here. Now, whenever I draw hair, I keep my pencil held very, very lightly because there's going to be a lot of diagonals back and forth. And what I mean by diagonals is we're going to be hitting the layers in different angles like this. Now, let's, hypothetically speaking, let's just pretend that those of you listening are trying to draw long hair. When it hangs off of the head, you're going to get a lot of strands clumped together, and they're going to fall because gravity tells it to. And what you'll have is these different directional, almost pockets. You'll notice, especially if you look on top of somebody's head, you'll see shadows, and they almost look like crevices, where you have light hitting a clump of hair, and then in between another clump, there's a shadow. One of the biggest questions is, well, where do you put that shadow? How do you know? Well, the fun part is you can have some creative freedom on when you do that. So this is how I actually start an area of hair. Let's pretend that some of the hair is, is kind of curved at the end. So you notice that what I'm drawing now is a bunch of lines that are not intersecting. They're stopping before the intersection. Now, why am I doing that? It's because... I'm giving the illusion that there is a solid mass above or on top of a mass behind it. If I were to crisscross the lines, then that means somebody out there has transparent hair. And I would love to find that because <laughs> I don't know a human being that has that. You can wet hair. You can look at an x-ray vision, do whatever you want. <laughs> you can't see hair behind hair. Uh, anyway. So when I'm doing this, I'm eventually going to come to a point. Now I drew the edges of the hair here. So this is more, it's kind of like anime hair or Alita, you know, like Battle Angel. Uh, great movie, love the design, good character design. It, it's more of like the cyberpunk pointy hair feel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work with that. And if it comes to a point here, okay, I whenever I start a big section of hair, I don't do all this first. This is done first. Okay, so it kind of dictates where I'm going to go with the hair instead of just guessing and hoping for the best. Unless you're doing frizzy ends, like split ends or whatever, because then anything goes. You, you have no idea what's happening at the bottom of that hair, man or woman. <laughs> so I'm going to treat these points as if there's longer strands going up the hair or the head, I should say. So I have this main strand here. Again, I'm working in clumps. So notice that 
everything that's happening in between each of these pointed clumps, there's nothing to be seen other than the tone of the paper. And we're going to be working with that later. All right, so now that I have some clumps, and maybe I'll have some fall in a different direction, like this. Think of like waves in the, in the river or the ocean. All right, so now that they're splitting at the end, the next part is not the strands of hair. You want to use this negative space to your advantage. Instead, we're going to move into shadows now so that we can separate all of the different clumps of hair and put the details on very at the very end. Because first, you have to establish a light source. This under here is underneath this. Okay, so if the light, no matter where the light's coming from, I mean, her face is not lit from above. It's lit from this direction. Oh, sorry, it's not on the screen. Okay, so the light's going this way, but kind of in front of us. That's why you see this cast shadow across the forehead, some of her eye sockets covered. Okay, and she's got this pretty nice highlight right here on the forehead, and then you got your core shadow running down the face. So we're going to treat it as if all of this is in shadow, and maybe down here you're going to see some uh, light hitting the very ends of it. It's not going to be as strong down here because it's further away from the, the light source. Okay, so in that case, I'm just going to pick some canyons. I'm just going to call them canyons. And I'm going to darken it just a little bit. Those of you that are brand new to my channel, thanks for tuning in. Um, you know, this is where I specialize in creature design, but I also have been drawing all my life and I try to give as many drawing lessons as I can to help you guys on your artistic journey. All right, so notice how when I'm doing this, I'm trying to imagine where pockets of shadows would exist, okay? Because these strands are opening up, so it's darker in between where they're touching, and then all of a sudden it opens up and it's going to be less dark. The shadow is dissipating, okay? Now, all of this is under shadow, but I'm getting the, I'm getting all of the foundation and the details in first because the shadow is the very last thing you put down, period. You don't put the cast shadow down and then detail on top of it. You can, but it's easier if you get your details in first because then you just slowly start to layer the shadows on. Like with, with this and the face, uh, I, I put the core shadow and the shadows down first because I wasn't sure if I wanted to put the, you know, like the robotic sectional lines in there, and I eventually did. But this way, you'll get all the strands of hair and you don't have to worry about going back. There we go. Now, here's another fun thing about hair. If you have just laying hair and it's coming down the head or if it's slightly blowing in the breeze, you're going to have the ends of it being blown differently because it weighs different, okay? So for example, here, maybe I'll, I'll draw in um, a point where the hair is kind of split at the end of it and it's blowing this direction. Okay, and then maybe this one kind of comes down and touches this one. This one's being blown up even more. So now you're starting to see the layered effect. If this comes up, then I'm going to need some shadows inside here. Now the way I'm holding my pencil to achieve this is it's about mid-pencil. I'm using my pinky underneath to kind of guide my palm. Uh, I'm Lucky enough that when I drew this particular picture, my palm is off the page, so I don't even have to worry about smearing the graphite. And if you're new to this channel again, I also go over my artwork with black Prismacolor because the wax from the black Prismacolor mixed in with the graphite helps keep the graphite down. Now, over time, you open and close, open and close, open and close, and you move your sketchbook around. Yes, you're going to get some kind of graphite that's going to stick to the other side of the page. That's inevitable but this will at least help it. I don't like using fix stiff because it, it's like, if you want to go back and correct something, you can't. Fix stiff is awesome for charcoal. I mean, oh yeah, you definitely need it for charcoal. But for graphite, you don't need it. Okay, so now that I have that, it looks like this big section right here is going to be more prominent than what's behind it. So what I'll do is I'll just try to keep 
that first section of hair all on top and I'm just going to lightly put in some shadows where I feel it needs to be so that this hair looks like it's on top of that hair. So you can already start to see the layering effect and I have done nothing in between these areas. It's tempting to want to do every single little strand. It is. I mean, I, I did it for years until I figured out that was probably the worst thing to do. Unless you're doing some kind of character where it's, it's a synthetic type of fur or hair, then yes, by all means, you can do every single strand. Okay. Now, this way, what I like doing is I like taking my pencil and I like doing swooping motions. I gave this in a previous lesson with uh, drawing fur. Okay, and that is, if I want big sections to look like it's growing in different directions, I'll kind of fan out the hair like this. Now, the very first lines that I'm putting down, these big ones, those are going to be the start of larger clumps of hair. Okay, so like this one up here, I'm just gonna add another point to it. But I don't wanna keep everything the exact same. You don't wanna be monotonous with your hair. Part of the beauty of drawing fur and hair and, and feathers even, is that there's a lot of controlled chaos going on. Just look in nature. I mean, just look at animals and look at birds and even humans. You'll see that there's a lot of chaos, but it's all controlled because it's either going in the same direction, it's all, it's all being hit by the same light source. So it's kind of nice. So again, here's a directional change. That's when, that's when you know that you should apply shadow also. When two different sections are meeting each other, you can darken the point. So for example, you see here, there's like a crisscross. So I'm gonna darken that and I'm gonna fade my pencil stroke out. And then here's another crisscross, I'm gonna fade it out. And now underneath here, I can put a shadow in. Now, what does that do? Those of you watching right now, it automatically made these two sections pop off on top of what this is. Now you're starting to see the, the, the awesomeness of layering without having to do much. It's, it's great, it's just patience. Now, again, we don't want all of these to look the same. Okay, so let's, let's have some fun here. Let's curl some out like this. Maybe put some in different directions and we need some love down here, so I don't know if she takes care of her hair. Who knows? Maybe maybe she's completely fake. I don't know. Okay, now I'm starting to just lightly put in some strands of hair where I think they can exist together. Like this, and you'll notice that when I when I drew this hair up here, it's coming to a point. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this hair different than this one. Maybe she's styling it differently. Cause like the side of her head, obviously it, it, it's bald with a metal plate or plastic or what, whatever the cyborg's made of. So maybe she shaved or just maybe this is a all different material. Maybe it's plastic. I don't know. Cause I like up here, I can put in very long strands and not crisscross them, but have a meat at the very end like this so look how look how cool that is all right and then these two points let's get let's get uh, creative with it we're gonna see this coming over okay so maybe maybe it comes all the way over to that and then underneath here some other strands so that's gonna be darker maybe there's like a split end right there and then maybe this comes out now you're gonna to start to see that controlled chaos and it's really cool because it makes your, it makes the hair seem alive. When, even when you look at anime hair, uh, whether you, whether it doesn't matter what you watch. I mean, I remember Ninja Scroll way back in the mid nineties. That was my favorite anime ever, man, with Jubei Kivagami, he's like an awesome ninja. His hair was kind of curly and there were some characters in there with straight hair some with like shaved heads. It was really cool. And you, you have to look at how the hair touches each other or the strands. Oh, I think, you know what? I think my phone is moving. Hold on a second. Guys, I'm, I apologize for that. I promise I'm getting a camera. <laughs>
Thanks for sticking with me this long. There we go. So I'm just going to have some fun. I might actually darken the, the bottom of this and move it up some. There we go. I'm like darken the end of that hair. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my pencil and I'm flicking up the strands of hair. Just the ends. And I'm ending right around the midway point of the like the big cluster so that it, it kind of makes you guess on what's happening right there. Remember, less is more, the cliche saying, what's well, actually true, less is more. Now, if you wanna draw curly hair, here's what I suggest. So let's do a whole new section down here. Watch this. I'm going to choose directions that I want to put the big curls, and then I'm going to make it look as if they exist together, not tied together, but almost like a rope. Like this, and I'm going to draw the ends of it. Look how light I'm making everything. This is very suggestive. It's very gestural, and you can always build on top of it. So the three things to think about whenever you're doing hair is light source number one. All right. When you look at this big clump of hair right here, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say clump. When you look at these strands of hair that are clumped together, which one do you feel is on top of everything else? Okay, it's probably this one. This one is going to get the strongest treatment of light. Okay, and then you just layer it down. So if it's lit directly from above, okay, so there's gonna be a light source right here. There's gonna be cast shadow along all this hair under here, and then this one comes out. So this is going to get a light source, but it's going to be dissipated versus this one as you move down the picture. So this is why, now you're starting to see why I move in sections versus trying to draw the whole dang thing. And that was something that took me years to learn when I was obsessed with details. And that is I wanted to see everything like on the at first, all the scales, all the wrinkles, hair, fangs, spikes, eyes, claws, everything. And then I realized that I was putting details on something that was not designed properly. And when you put more details on things that are not designed properly, you actually start showing off imperfections of what you didn't design correctly. Always remember that. Patience is a virtue. That's another cliche thing. But with art, 100%. With Bartholomew's head, okay, this entire head took me 12 hours to do. I did not do it in one sitting. You have to do the same thing with hair if you want to get this much detail in it. It just depends on what you want to draw, okay? If you want to become an illustrator, if you want to be a concept artist for games or film, hair is just as important as awesome eyes, awesome lips, armor, etc. And the same thing with environment art. If your trees don't look good, everything else is going to suck. If the people don't look good and you have awesomely painted clouds and rocks and rivers and stuff, the whole thing sucks. Okay, just remember that. So you want to make sure the hair looks good too. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting off track here. Um, can't you tell I'm passionate about it? Yeah. So here I'm going to put some darker strokes at the very ends of the curls. Now, the great thing about curls is that there's a lot of places on hair where it looks like it's fading into other sections of the hair. That's where layering value really comes into play and makes it look awesome. So here, here's what I mean. Now that I have a very, very rough outline of the curls, I'm going to take my pencil. I'm going to do my... Um, pass a value going up the entire section of hair like this, maybe down here too. I'm going to try to move the strokes as closely together as possible. And now that I'm going to turn the page to hit this at another angle, okay, I'm going to hit this at angle number two, and I'm going to go over it again. Okay, so again, those of you that are new, my method of laying down value is a minimum of three different directions without pushing harder in each direction 
it's going to give you a nice first coating of graphite. Okay, now direction number three. So I'm going to go over this. By the third direction, if done properly, you can start to fill in a lot of the gaps and start to see a nice coating of value. Okay, so here I'm going to do maybe four passes. I think four will do it, but I don't want to do the same passes. So I'm going to do one almost completely horizontally. Completely horizontal. There we go. Okay, you could do as many as you want. It doesn't matter. But a minimum of three will do it. You get better and better as you start building up your, you know, your mechanical movements with drawing, your hand-eye coordination, your your muscle memory, etc. It all plays together. You're gonna guaranteed, guys. You're gonna be able to do this without thinking. It just takes time. Now, what I want to do is I want to put in some values in the the canyons, the crevices. So I'm going to lightly put in where I believe the darkest parts of the hairs are going to exist. You know, there's a cast shadow right there. Notice how I'm not getting very dark with this still. I don't need to. I'm just splitting certain strands where I feel it's going to look cool and give it some dynamic energy. So maybe at the ends here, I'll just kind of make these play off each other, but go in different directions. You want to put those curls in too. So what I mean by curls, like this way, this way, make it look like the hair is curling. It doesn't have to be like this. It doesn't mean the little corkscrew. You can. I mean, maybe your character permed her hair or his hair, but you don't have to do that. Again, you just want to give it like a little natural curl. By the way, those of you listening, like I, I, this isn't going to be the only lesson for hair. This is just bare bones, how to start. We're going to be getting into some pretty advanced stuff in future lessons, especially with spiky hair. What does hair look like when it touches the skin? How to shade that part? What is the, what do the hair roots look like for buzz cuts versus, you know, long fine hair. I mean, there's so much stuff that we're going to do. Okay. Now watch what happens. All of these little areas where it looks like the places of the hair are clumped together, I'm going to push harder in areas where the least amount of light is touching. And this is going to drastically change everything. Right in there. I'm going to be subtle with it. I have to know where to stop. Right there. Now you're probably wondering, wait, how do you actually know to put that there? It's because of the the rough lines that I drew prior to this. Okay. Now, if it's a little too dark or you think it's a little too dark, that's your job to start fading this off. Okay. So you have these little dark areas and now you start to see, especially that big first strand that we drew, you're just you're seeing some pop, okay? It's starting to come off. So what I suggest to do is look at all the dark areas that you did and start to slowly fade off pencil strokes that look like strands of hair. And you're going to fade it off into the tone of the paper. Okay, and the same thing down here, even if it's in shadow. Just strands of hair. Thick to thin, thick to thin, thick to thin. You don't push too hard, but you do it just enough to where you can see the weight lift off at the end of the pencil strokes. There we go. There we go. Now, the cool thing about this is, once you start putting down the strokes, you're going to start to see other parts of the hair come at you that you didn't know were there. For example... When I start layering this stuff and I'm starting to curl it, I notice that like when I put those strands down, the hair is extending down here and there's other parts where I can put shadows in and then extend those areas up with thick to thin lines, like so. And all of a sudden, more shadows will come out 
and you're going to start to see thicker, fuller hair. So like here, I don't like where that is because I don't think hair really does that. So maybe I can put a point here and just kind of roll it. Just play with it. Like this, and then all of a sudden it's curly and, and we're fun. <laughs> we're happy. Now here, here's the fun part. I'm going to lightly put in the direction that the strands would be going. This is going to be lighter than what I did under here for the shadow. Now if you if you have a heavy hand and you have trouble actually releasing pressure when you're sketching, it's all about your grip. Okay. The more you hold your pencil to the front, the more you have to push down at a vertical angle. This is detail. This is gestural. So keep keep the grip loose when you draw. Okay. You don't want to grip it like this and do everything. All right. Okay. So let's continue. Now here is where keeping it really light pays off. The the pencil strokes because now it's all about layering the areas that you feel more hair could exist so there's a big gap in here right there's a big gap in here so that probably means that I could get darker where the cast shadow probably is going to to live and like under here under here I saw a new spot that I didn't before so I'm just gonna darken that and I'm just going to fade some of these strokes off or these strands off into other parts of the hair. All right. Now we're starting to see a, a layer of hair happen. So you could imagine doing the same thing with straight hair like this. It's just in a different direction. So for example, there's some big strands right here that exist. So I'm going to get dark and I'm going to fade that off, but I don't have to curl it. I'm just going to Release the pressure. Look how far away my hand is compared to the sketchbook. Okay. Now my hand is tilted to the side. I could probably go back a little bit. I'm just going to find these little areas where I believe pockets of shadows are existing. Very, very lightly. And then push. Release the pressure. Maybe under here too. Okay. Now you can start to see that really cool effect. Um, there And also... This is where you have permission to do randomized shadows. It, it's kind of like if you're going to draw somebody's or somebody's mouth or a creature's mouth and you have teeth and you want to know, well, where do I put the shadows in between each tooth to show the inside of the mouth? You can guess that. Everybody's mouth is different. Just smile in the mirror and look at your teeth. Wherever the shadows appear is different than the 8 billion people on this planet. Okay, It's very unique. So like here, I'm going to put one because I want to, and I'm going to fade that off. Here, I'm just going to pick a random spot, and then I'm just going to fade that off in both directions, like this, because I don't want a lot of light to get in that particular spot. And then I can start layering some shadows here. Now, why is that going there? Because of this strand of hair. So you can start to see the layering effect. Okay, so what I showed you down here for the the curls, the same thing could be said about like the frizzy ends or the frayed ends. Okay, um, my suggestion to you all is look at the different styles of hair. Just look at beauty magazines. Look at you know even video game characters, movies, um, all kinds of different resources you can look for hair, and just try to draw it. Try to draw your own hair. If you're bald like me or you have like a, an extremely low buzz cut, then you could probably practice with beards because it's essentially the same thing, even though beards are a little curlier. It's still hair that's together. All right. If you like today's lesson, uh, I encourage you to like and subscribe and especially comment below. I love reading you guys' comments. I try to answer every single one. It's getting a little harder, <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm blessed that the, the channel's taken off the way it is, but it, I try to answer everybody and, uh, there's only so much time in the day that I can do that. But, um, yeah, so I always liked hearing suggestions about the lessons that I could do next. So I have a lot, a lot to teach and a lot of, that I want to show you guys. Thanks again for tuning in, everybody I had a blast doing this and 
I will see you all soon. Later.